I want to go to Minnesota, where another attack took place this weekend. A man in St. Cloud <clears throat> walks into a local mall and, according to reports, knifed 10 people, and he's shot dead by a security guard. Um, I wanted to turn right now to Haji Youssef, um, who is the community director of the Unite Cloud, a St. Cloud group that promotes cultural understanding. On Sunday, you spoke at a news conference on behalf of the Somali-American community. Talk about who the man is who believed to have knifed all these people, identified by his family. He has been killed. Um. Dahir Amin, uh, uh, Dahir Ahmed is an exceptional. Uh, uh, Dahir Aden is an exceptional student. Uh, graduate uh, high school, uh, this local high school. Went to college uh, at Saint Cloud State University. Uh, very, very uh, joyful young kid. Uh, happy, always smiling. Very social, outgoing, and. Um, so, on that uh, fateful day, uh, from what I gathered from the family uh, on the early morning after, uh, is that um, he went out to uh, buy a new iPhone 7, and, um, and uh, when he left, he was really, really happy, and uh, they uh, had no any uh, suspicion or anything that, that told them otherwise. Uh, he went out there, and they don't know what happened after that. Uh, so, that is the last moment uh, that they saw their son go out to uh, go to the mall to buy an iPhone. What do you believe, then, took place? As a community, uh, you know, the whole community of St. Cloud, first of all, uh, you know, we, we are with the victims, because uh, uh, they are victims. Um, so we still don't know what happened. And uh, so we are with the victims, and we pray for the victims, and we stand with the victims uh, in and around St. Cloud. And also in the state of Minnesota, you know, uh, it's a shocker. Everyone is shocked in the community. Uh, regardless what part of uh, community you are and who you are, whatever group you come from, everyone is really shocked and surprised. And people are looking for answers. And um, uh, right now, at the moment, uh, you know, what the family is uh, uh, requesting is uh, what we know right now so far is what the witnesses have said and uh, what the law enforcement have also uh, informed us. Uh, that there's a security tape, uh, and, uh, and the family also is looking for answers as well. Mm -hmm. They also want to see those security tapes and see what happened, really, so they can really understand, uh, at least, you know, they can, you know, know what happened to their son. Police have, concern, have confirmed that his name is Dahir Ahmed Aden, um, and an ISIS website has claimed responsibility, calling the assailant a soldier of the Islamic State. Uh, authorities say um, that the attack is being investigated as a case of terrorism. Again, he was shot dead by an off-duty police officer. So talk about how the Somali community is dealing with this in the greater Minneapolis, St. Paul, St. Cloud area. Is this one of the largest populations of Somalis. I mean, um, the young man was born in Kenya, but is of Somali descent. Is this one of the largest populations of Somalis in the United States? Yes. I mean, uh, we have a, a, a population of uh, Somalis, Muslims, um, that live in the state of Minnesota. Uh, as you know, uh, I think people have come uh, together on, uh, on this occasion, because they, the Somalis in the state of Minnesota, do care about the state of Minnesota. They love this state. They live here. This is their home. Uh, they don't know. They don't have any other home. They know that uh, they have been welcomed. They've been greatly welcomed to the state of Minnesota. The state of Minnesota has opened its arm uh, for a lot of other immigrants and many people of religious belief. Uh, there is also the historical uh, part of you know a lot of groups coming to this country. And 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 there is a book. I say there is a book that is being written uh, about the story of this country and the history of this country. And then and the Somali story, Somali-American story, is part of that book that continues to be written about this country and how great this country is and has welcomed a lot of people to come to this country. With that said, we have uh, come together uh, as a community uh, uh, with our allies, with different groups and different religious uh, faith-based groups and everyone rallied behind this one issue. Uh, we also want to deal with this issue in, in, in a way that we are working with the law enforcement, we are working with other community uh, communities around uh, the state of Minnesota and in central Minnesota. And once we get answers and we know what happened, then we want to respond together as a community, not as a group, but as a community, because we have all been affected. 
uh, by this uh, incident. And it's not a definition of a community when one person or two people do this. Uh, it does not mean that the whole community is for that. Uh, it basically means is, you know, as you know, they, they, sometimes they, there's evil in every community, and uh, evil walk among, among us all the time. And there's incidents of uh, evil that has happened in central Minnesota uh, a couple of weeks ago, when we had uh, uh, a man by the name of D uh, Dan Heinrich uh, kidnapped uh, the Jack Jacob uh, Wetterling. And, and for 27 years, Dan has been terrorizing uh, the state of Minnesota. People were afraid for their kids. So it's one incident, and, and nobody went back and, and asked for to explain why. Uh, nobody went back and say, "Is Danny a Christian? Is he what faith group is he? He is in what group does he come? What part of Central Minnesota he lived in?" So and there was not a lot of international media, but this one incident uh, has just put Saint Cloud on the spot, has put the state of Minnesota on the spot, has put the Somali American community on the spot, and we have to come out and and, and working with our state, working with our law enforcement, working with everyone involved, we need to find answers what I, really happened there. I mean, that's a really significant point. When Timothy McVeigh, for example, blew up the Oklahoma City building, uh, white Christian men were not rounded up around the country, or a whole questioning of what does this mean about white men who are Christian. It was dealt with as a crime. Now, uh, Jelani right. Hussein, the executive director of the Minnesota chapter of the Council on American-Islamic Relations, CARE, told The Wall Street Journal that he and other Muslims had received threats in the wake of the stabbing. He also said that a car flying a Confederate flag had been driving around Somali neighborhoods on Sunday night, uh, harassing residents. Do you know anything about this? Oh, yeah. I, I tweeted that out once I got—I uh, get a lot of calls from the community and from everyone. As part of Unite Cloud, um, you know, I, we work with uh, everyone in our community, and we not only speak of, we, we don't not only speak for for any one group. We speak for everyone. We speak on issues of homelessness. We speak on issues of feeding our, neighbor, our neighborhood, and taking care of uh, our neighbors. And it's two people that have started this organization. I'm a Muslim, um, a Somali American. Uh, Natalie Ringsmuth is a Christian, a conservative Christian uh, that was born and raised uh, in Saint Cloud. So we have come together in, in saying that too. So when we get we get a lot of information from the community, either tweet or our inbox, or we get a call. And we got a call that there are about eight vehicles driving around Saint Cloud, uh, downtown Saint Cloud, and in around Somali neighborhoods, Somali American neighborhoods, mm. and other neighborhoods uh, where Muslims live, and uh, they're just honking, threatening, verbally abusing. Uh, I've heard of incidents on Highway I-94 where. Uh, a, 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 a Somali American girl uh, and her family wearing hijab got harassed by two, three bikers, and um, so we get these calls right now. Uh, even as far as the next day, uh, on Monday, there was a lot of Somali American families that did not take their kids to school, did not want to go outside the house because they were really afraid. They were really scared. Mm. Kids were really scared. Everyone was really scared. So uh, it, it was a scary moment. Even for me. Uh, I had to go pick milk uh, for my two-year-old, uh, two because uh, uh, my wife was a little bit scared to go out outside that night. So the, you have that going on. And uh, so and the best way to do it is for us to rally behind other faith groups in, in, in Central and St. Cloud and leadership, uh, so that we can respond uh, together, working with the police chief, working with the mayor, working with the leadership in St. Cloud, and also generally the law enforcement, because we really want to know because that's the only way we can really work this out. And we want to support all leadership involved to get this to the bottom of this, uh, to know the truth and really what happened. And that's the only way we can go about this. It just, first of all, also, as a community, if indeed it's proven, if indeed there are facts supporting that uh, uh, young uh, Jahir Aden, first of all, this is his own individual action. So it, he does not represent myself or anybody that I know in the state of Minnesota who's Somali-American. That's one. Two, if indeed it's proven that uh, Mr. Jahir uh, Ahmed Aden um, was behind this and that he had a connection to an, a non-terrorist organization from outside, um, then we have a problem in our community, and we need to admit that, and we need to find out ways and how to deal with that problem. Uh, we, we cannot keep on living. We cannot keep on living on denial that there's problems, because we know in any community there are issues, and people need to deal with it and find before they it's too late and we have more issues or something like this happening in a larger scale. So we have to work with our neighbors 
Uh, we have to work with our community. We have to work with our state. We have to work with law enforcement. We have to find solution together and respond together. I think that is important. Uh, most of the time, you have people want to respond things in a many different ways. It confuses people. People really uh, uh, don't understand what is the motive of some other people. You know?